So hey, and welcome back to a bit of a different kind of video I'm going to be doing today. Um, this is not only really something I show, but when I'm making a video, I'll often like play around with the software quite a bit and just sort of get a feel for it, and then I'll make a video about it. But today I am going to basically show you uh, me just playing around with it, and I really haven't used Geos much before. Um, this is Geos for the Commodore 64. I have messed around with just a little bit off camera, but I just want to sort of explore it and then record myself doing it. And this might be a bit of an interesting video. I don't know. See if you like it. I might do this sort of thing more often if people like this video. So uh, yeah. Here we are, this is what the screen you get when you first boot into Geos. Got this window here, not totally sure how to move it. But got different things here. Or configure does. That's that. So for configuring the drives, I guess. I don't know. Got preference manager. really weird like I keep wanting to double click on something to open it but no you have to like select it and then press like the Commodore key plus Z to open it weird so, so in here we can change uh, stuff like the acceleration and the velocity for the mouse pointer change like the border in the background I don't know, let's make the border green Changed, but I think we have to first save it. And exit. Nothing's really changed. I don't know. Uh, we got this really cool thing here. We've got a. Uh, we can edit our cursor. Let's see if we can change what I want it to look like. So I don't know. Let's go like. Let's add a little smiley face behind it. So as you can see, I've changed um, the cursor to have a little smiley face to follow the, follows it around. Hey, little smiley face. Um, I figured out they need to press change when you've made a change to something to get it to take effect. So we can change our border to like green or something again. Then you press change, which I always thought you needed to press save. It's a little hard on the eyes. Back to black. And uh, yeah. Press save. You can see the sprites flickering too. And there we go. We're back. To the way you can edit the cursor. Oh, a little smiley face. Uh, some of these things here you can't open. Like joystick, you just get in there. Um, got more stuff here. We've got an alarm clock. Yeah, you can set alarms. Very impressive that it's running on a Commodore 64. It's it's a lot similar to like something you see on an early Macintosh, and yet it's still running something with the something like 64k of RAM and like one megahertz CPU. 
Uh, got some stuff here. Got some converters. Got Geo Spell. That comes with it, I guess. See, the cursor goes away when it's loading something from disk because it's just the Commodore 64 isn't fast enough to uh, do stuff. Um, here's where we can uh, spell check things. There's a document I made when I was testing it out. Uh, let's try opening Me 1581. I've never used this before. Let's follow the pages. And it's doing a spell check. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna sit through this whole thing. Okay, so I'm back. I had to go for a little bit. Um, so the spell checker here. There's a few more things I want to look at here. Got alarm clocks, got paint drivers. Uh, there's some drivers here. Um, got geo right, that's another thing I want to look at. I messed around with this a little bit last night, but I want to continue to look at it. I'm gonna look at it, show it to you guys here. Takes a while to load. I do not have a fast load installed here because I'm using an emulator to record um, create document Give the document a name Just enter and I don't have a fast load installed currently because I'm using an emulator to record Let's see I'm using uh, vice here just because it's easier to record. Uh, the screen from an emulator that it is the actual system even though I have used Geos on an actual Commodore 64. Um, so this is GeoWrite, arguably one of the best word processor programs ever made for the Commodore 64. It is a true what you see is what you get and it's, I think it's the only what you see is what you get uh, word processor for the Commodore 64. So I don't know, we could just type stuff. Yay, absolutely, gee, ah, I keep trying to grab the actual mouse and use the uh, joystick. Select, and uh, yeah, we can center it. We don't quite, can't quite see the full page here, and then it jumps to the other side. It's still centered. Um, different options. Change the font. What does the Commodore font look like? Ten point. That's I guess the default. Oh. So there's the font that the basic prompt uses. Uh, their fonts are actually called typefaces. Roma. You can make that like upwards of twenty-four point. So I guess we can't make the fonts, or I guess like certain fonts, we can only make certain sizes. Cool, but it's true, what you see is what you get, which is pretty impressive for the system. We can do stuff like bold, we can uh, outline. I love watching this draw. I like draw in. Yeah, font. Outline. And, uh, yeah. Options. Got preview. Wonder what that does. It's loading something from disk. Um. It's taking a while to render here. I'm assuming it's just like a print preview of the document. Yeah, it's our preview. Geos is very slow, and that is part of the limitations of the RAM. You could add a RAM expander to Geos and make it run quite a bit faster because then it can load in more at a time. 
it's very limited what can it can load in. It can really only load in very small chunks of code at a time, so it has to unload and load and unload a lot of code and other uh, elements, and that's just makes it very slow. Or if you have a RAM expander installed, it can load in more and not have to unload stuff so often that it'll need to load in again soon. There's also GLX128, which runs quite a bit faster. It's, it really isn't too much that I'm aware of in terms of feature differences, but it can load in more at a time, which makes it quite a bit faster. So yeah, sorry I was interrupted there again. Um, That's GeoWrite. Uh, we can access different things here. Um, converter, some fonts. Uh, one final thing I'll actually GeoDraw. That was a pretty big draw for this product. Ha 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 ha, pun somewhat intended. Okay, where is it? I had GeoDraw open before. No, not GeoDraw, it's called GeoPaint. It looks like a calculator in a notepad. Geo paint here. Create a document here. File name. I don't know. Sure. And, uh, yeah, we can draw things. All 16 colors of the Commodore 64. Uh, I'm just gonna do some randomness here. Um, I'll allow this to zoom in. Fairly impressive for the Commodore 64. Um, I think this is the flood fill. No, it's not. What does that do? Pattern thing. Yay, flood fill. I love watching like flood fill or like when it fills the the entire shape like run a, a CPU this slow and just watching it slowly draw in. Okay, that one was kinda Let's see if we can get some color cells to flash here. Anyway, so I'm just rambling right now. Um, yeah. Just gonna randomly draw things. So, uh, yeah, that's Geos. Or me just exploring Geos. Obviously, I'm not extremely familiar with it. Uh, I'm gonna show you. Hopefully, do some more research, do some more exploring, and I'll do a video on it soon. Um, yeah. Super cool product, super impressive. This is running on a Commodore 64. Man, look at that flood fill. Oh, this is going so slow. Yeah, slow. Another thing I did sort of discover and I'm going to mention is. Although Geos here does not have true multitasking, 
Um, like you can't have several applications over at once. There are some applications you can have open on top of certain other. So you have like big applications like GeoPaint and GeoWrite. And then there's other things like you can have smaller applications, sort of like early Mac OS. Like you can have the calculator run on top of it. So you have sort of multitasking like that, but not really, not like what would come later on. So you have like GeoPaint, and then you can have like the calculator running on top of it, like both running at the same time. But you can't say, for example, have Geo Write and Geo Paint open at the same time. They have stuff like the calendar, alarm clock, and whatnot. Yeah, I don't know how to close out of this. I think right there. Yep. So anyway, that's just it for me exploring Geos, and uh, yeah, hope you found this maybe a little interesting. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day.